Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we take a look at the main race voters across the Commonwealth will have their eyes on and people in our region take advantage of early voting so they can avoid waiting in lines as they go to cast their vote. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Dakota Makris. Man, the weekend is never long enough. It's Monday. Good morning, 602 here. Let's head over to Brandon for a check of that forecast this morning. And Brandon, I know it didn't rain over the weekend here in Eastern Kentucky, but yesterday I went home to see my mom in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. It rained cats and dogs on Sunday. I was so, I was so mad. Exactly. So again, uh, here's the thing too. I mean, it, it, it Rain in spots here. I don't think okay. it rained everywhere here, right. but there were some spotty chances for showers and storms both days. I think it rained a little bit on Saturday night after I went to mm. bed, and then maybe a little bit on a Sunday night right. uh, as well. But again, overall, we got very lucky here across the mountains this weekend. Let's take a look at this morning. Fog is building in. Not so lucky today. Anything less than five miles on this map is dense fog, and that includes several locations that are not showing up on the sensors because we've seen it on Jenkins Mountain. We've seen it in Pikeville. We have seen it at different locations that we have cameras this morning, but not along the Wolf Powell County line at the Mountain Parkway there near Slade this morning. And you see temperatures very mild up there, right around 59. That's basically the consensus. A couple of mid 50s out there. The coolest spot is Clintwood at 54, but everybody else upper 50s, low to mid 60s out there, 65 in Monticello, kind of the warm spot. Breakfast forecast, we are going to continue to see again some mild temperatures out there this morning, trying to go split the difference there around 57, 58. So again, those will continue to warm. Some sunshine possible early, some more clouds possible late, and then some scattered rain chances this afternoon. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you. Election Day is right around the corner, and with every state constitutional office up for grabs, one race in particular is catching people's eye. Julia Sandor reports. The main focus for election night is the Republican primary. This has been an interesting race for the Republican nomination for governor. With 12 candidates, you've had probably five or six who have run aggressively, and you've had a couple of perceived front runners, according to the polling. Our very own Bill Bryant takes a look at the race, analyzing the debates and polling. One of the front runners in the governor's race is Daniel Cameron, who says he's hopeful he'll come out on top. Cautiously optimistic. Obviously, you never know until um, all the uh, votes are cast and, uh, um, you know, we feel confident, though, in our opportunity to win this thing and ultimately, uh, you know, face uh, Mr. Bashir in the fall. That's one thing that many of the Republican candidates have in common. They believe Andy Bashir will be their Democratic competitor. For putting the effort in that you need to have if you're going to beat Andy Bashir this fall. So we're proud to embrace that we are the grassroots people's first old fashioned driving my big red truck uh, to the people and spreading a positive message across our Commonwealth. Ryan Quarles is another candidate doing well in the polls, along with Kelly Kraft, who brought out Senator Ted Cruz to her rally on Saturday night. The momentum is amazing and we are working as if it's, you know, there's no tomorrow. So we are out and about just had like we were starting September 7th and we will be to the last poll closes. Predictions show a low voter turnout, which could mean it's anybody's race. But the indications this year and the Secretary of State has said there's a possibility that the total turnout will be 10 percent or just above that. So there is a, a lack of interest in the in this primary campaign for reasons that we will probably find out after the election. In Lexington, Julia Sandor, WKYT. Polls will be open statewide Tuesday from 6 a.m. through 6 p.m. and we will have coverage from WYMT election headquarters as soon as polls close. All eyes are on the race for governor, but there are other races to watch on Tuesday. Voters in Madison County will have the opportunity to vote for countywide alcohol sales. The city of Richmond is wet with bars, restaurants and package sales. Bria only has limited restaurant sales and the rest of the county is dry. That could soon change depending on how things go tomorrow. Another special election will fill a Kentucky State Senate seat. Three candidates are running for Ralph for Senator Ralph Alvarado's former seat. It's been an expensive primary campaign for governor. One candidate has even broken two statewide campaign finance records. Garrett Weimer dug into the data. 
Much of that spending, as we confirmed in this WKYT Investigates fact check, has gone to inundate the airwaves with TV ads. Now, all of this data comes from reports filed with the Kentucky Registry of Election Finance. A large field of Republicans are vying for the GOP nomination. Here are the top four biggest campaign bank accounts. Kelly Kraft with close to $11 million. Daniel Cameron with $1.5 million. Ryan Quarles, $1.2 million. And Eric Dieters with three quarters of a million. Now, this is how much those candidates have spent, at least as of the 15 day pre election report that each candidate filed earlier this month. Kelly Kraft spent 9.6 million. Cameron, 1.1 million. Quarles, about 778,000. And Dieters spent all but about 13,000 of his. Now, the Courier Journal reports that Kraft's spending is a record total in a gubernatorial primary. But where did all of Kraft's money come from? Well, campaign finance reports show she loaned her own campaign $9.25 million. That's also believed to be a record. And that leaves about $1.6 million from other contributions. Now, to put that in perspective, bolstered by those loans, Kraft's campaign war chest is just under the total combined for all 20 other candidates of any party who are in or have been in the race at some point. No matter who wins these nominations Tuesday, there is going to be a lot of money spent in this governor's race in the fall. Republicans obviously will have the funding. There is going to be national interest in this campaign. We're just before the presidential year. They're looking for signals. And Kentucky is a governorship that uh, the Republicans would like to have. That Republican nominee is expected to face incumbent Democratic Governor Andy Bashir, who is running for re-election. His campaign fund is close to $7 million right now, and he has spent very little of that. Obviously, once the general election campaign begins, you can likely expect more donations to and spending from Governor Bashir. Now, we should note these numbers we saw today are for the candidates' official campaigns only. Those totals do not include any PAC spending in support of them, but those groups have also been active on the airwaves this campaign cycle. That was Garrett Weimer reporting. Many people across the Commonwealth have already been to the polls. Early voting started Tuesday, Thursday rather, and ended Saturday, allowing people to cast their votes who may have not had the opportunity to vote on Election Day. In Pike County, the county clerk says more than 200 people made it to the polls during that three-day period. On early voting on Thursday, we had 87. On Friday, we had 105. And today, we, you know, we've had in the early thir in 30 to 35 people so far. Well, the county clerk says voting is an important responsibility, and with 28 polling locations in Pike County alone, there's no reason not to get out and vote. The attorney general's office is warning Kentuckians to keep an eye out for election law violations and election fraud. If you see something strange at the polls, you can call the election fraud hotline. That number is 1-800-328-8683. It is active 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On election day, it will be staffed from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Prosecutors will review any tips submitted. Six ten here on this Monday morning. We continue to track a little bit of fog in some locations, but downtown Somerset is not one of them. 61 there on the circle. No major issues as you head out the door. Thanks to our friends at Speed Up for, 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 for providing that camera. Cannot get my word straight to save my life this morning. 54 in Clintwood to 65 there in Monticello this morning. Lake Cumberland County is a little bit uh, warmer this morning out there. I-75 and west and a little bit cooler in the east there. 55 Grundy, Prestonsburg, Hazard. And then, of course, that 54 in Clintwood. So let's play some Jeopardy with our weather today. What is your forecast? And it'll be 75 roughly. And what are some scattered showers and storms? Should have put widely scattered showers and storms there because that's what they'll be as we head into the afternoon under hours under partly the most cloudy skies. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Coming up next on Mountain News this morning, troops down at the southern border see a major drop in the number of migrants wanting to cross over into the U.S. Stay with us. We'll be right back.